It's four o'clock in the morning and I'm about to embark on my German trip and it looks like my coach has arrived so off we go. There are many reasons why people should go to Germany. I decided to take this trip for an event called Keyframe, a new conference focused on video production. It's brought to you by the lovely people that organise this traverse. The conference is actually in Hamburg, but I fancied meandering my way via a couple of other places. I decided to start my trip in Frankfurt. The reason being that it's cheap. I booked my flight four weeks in advance and it only cost me 40 quid, which includes check-in luggage. Plus, I've never been to Frankfurt and this is just a really good excuse to go. So off we go. So the first mission is to try and get from the airport to actually uh, Frankfurt train station. Unfortunately, I didn't get really a chance to do much preparation, so I'm not too sure about the transfer um, details and what's the best way. I was hoping to like find out when I got here and using my data, but for whatever reason, the internet is okay, absolutely sorry. buggered on my phone at the moment. Um, so Fine, yeah, no. uh, I found out there's actually no, a bus station right outside the airport. It's not, probably not the cheapest to get to Frankfurt, but uh, it seemed to be easy and it was right there. If I was to do this again, I probably would have double checked the timetable. I basically just one of the buses by about four minutes. Anyway, I'm not gonna start talking about the bus too much. I mean, it's not interesting, right? What you really want, guys, is the details of Frankfurt. So here we go. Thanks for looking, Joe. And now for a little bit of history and some interesting facts about Frankfurt. Frankfurt has had a long history of being an important trade hub with international trade fairs held since 1240. Its economy was based on trade and financial services. That prosperity in trade meant that it was the largest medieval city in Germany. Unfortunately, the original old square was destroyed in World War II. Thankfully, Germany's cultural heritage is very important to them and much of the old square buildings was restored, but I'll share more about the old square a bit later. If you have travelled around Germany, you'll probably notice that there isn't many skyscrapers. In fact, there are only 15 skyscrapers in Germany. 14 of them are actually located in Frankfurt. Remember that piece of trivia because you never know that could be useful in a pub quiz one day. I actually personally really like the mix of old and new buildings. And I finally have arrived in Frankfurt properly. So turns out I should have double checked this, but uh, Ryanair decided to go to a Frankfurt airport, which is a lot further away than I expected. It took like maybe an hour and a half to catch that coach to get to Frankfurt Central, but still worth it in the, in the end. The coach was nice and comfortable. It cost me 20 euros to get from uh, Frankfurt Hain, Hahn pronunciation failing. I'm actually staying in the Frankfurt hostel which is literally right opposite the train station. By the looks of things it's a pretty good hostel. Um, if you're on a budget they offer you like free breakfast and a free like vegetarian dinner of some sort. Anyway, um, it's taking me most of the day to, to get here. Not that I'm complaining. I'm actually like still surprised how cheap it is to fly over here. If I just had carry on it would only cost me six pounds. Anyhow, you're not here to hear me talk about how cheap the flight is. Let's have a quick look around Frankfurt and see what we can find. I decided to go on a free walking tour and just in case you don't know what is a free walking tour it's basically just that and the guides make their money purely from donations and tips. If they don't give you a good tour then they don't get any tips. I usually tip between 5 to 15 euros depending on how good the tour is. I thoroughly recommend it if you only have a limited amount of time to explore the whole city and also it's a great way to meet other new people. And I chose the alternative walking tour. There's loads of other tour options as well including different languages. I saw one in Spanish, German and also in French. If you're interested in doing the alternative tour as well, the starting point is at the Gold Exchange with the start time of 10am and 2pm.
as this was an alternative guide, we covered some more quirky and less touristy subjects. Some topics included the needle drug consumption rooms and the sex trade. Ooh, uh. But don't worry, the guide does not suggest that you should participate. I also really enjoyed hearing stories of the various pieces of street art. Keep an eye out for the different Spider-Men when you look up, they are all over the city. And being a bit of a history geek, I really enjoyed the explanation of the unification of Germany inside St. Paul's Church. And the reason why I found this important is because this was the birthplace of modern Germany. After all of that culture, time for some food and some drink. A local German tavern was recommended to us called Axtell, which I'm probably butchering the pronunciation. I tried two local specialities, the apple wine, which was basically a dry wine, and I must admit it was particularly to my taste, it's a little bit too dry for my liking. And the second thing I decided to try was the green sauce over a pork schnitzel, and the pork schnitzel was really, really tasty, which is definitely more to my taste. Traditionally, you're supposed to have it with egg, but uh, it seemed a bit too basic for my liking. And now, back to you vlogging Joe. As I was about to go into the actual film museum, which I thought might be a good idea to check out some museums since I'm here, I noticed that there was some kind of bric-a-brac market. I always have this like fascination about these like flea markets. It's like, it's almost like nostalgic. And to be quite honest, every time I see one of these things, like, it just gives me a chance to like explore. And I've just entertained myself for about half an hour. If you're here in Frankfurt on a Saturday, right by where the museums are, um, on the right by the river, there's this market that which I guess is held quite regularly and it looks like about a kilometer long of random market stores. People just set up a table. So you've got things right from paintings, old lamps, uh, old electronics. I've seen like hi-fi systems which I think they kind of look like they're from the 80s or something like that. <laughs> there was even a store selling secondhand stamps and also loads of postcards. Unfortunately, I can't speak German, so I have no idea what the postcards are saying. Of course, there's the usual stuff as well, like uh, shoes, clothes, and those are different things like sort of underwear if you're missing your boxes or you're, you've got rubbish pants or anything like that. If you're looking for a place to actually buy yourself a random like gift for a friend, this is probably like a, a good place to go to. So yeah, come in here on a Saturday. I might just do some more research and figure out exactly if there's an official name for this place. If I do find an official name, check out my blog so I'll do tell all the details and whatnot. Make sure you subscribe and here's what's coming up on the next Frankfurt vlog and I'll see you at the next video. So I'm going to be here in Frankfurt.